we're going to do an exercise where we're going to perform a brief potential failure mode analysis. So uh, going to try and simulate this process from both the USACE and FERC point of view. Real quick review here, you know, this is the risk assessment. It's where we're kind of um, brainstorming all these potential failure modes uh, about a particular structure that we're focused on. We're going to screen that list of failure modes, and we're going to try to pick out the ones that are really going to drive the risk more than the others. So we may have a long list of failure modes initially, but we're going to um, whittle that down to something smaller. Um, and that's the PFMA part. So I'm going to skip what the risk assessment part is. So um, we're going to go on it through a quick exercise to kind of focus on that. Um, so just to kind of summarize again, the PFMA, it's, a, it's an early critical step in every risk assessment where we decide what we're going to be assessing the risk on. So we want to be careful. Um, we want to make sure that we're getting all the, um, getting our, our heads wrapped around the structure and have a good idea of make sure we're not risk, missing any major things. But it's a two-step process. Um, to say facilitated process, and I'm going to be your facilitator in this particular exercise. So first, we're going to brainstorm a couple of potential failure modes on this like um, simplified dam that I'm going to show you here in a second. And then we're going to select which potential failure modes are the most significant. So when you're doing this and you're brainstorming these failure modes, there's no wrong answer. Um, and you want to try to think of every possible way a dam or a levee can fail. So, you know, imagine that there's, you know, a, a, the dam is broken and there's a bunch of flood or there's a levee is broken and, and there's a bunch of flood downstream. How did that happen? What possible ways could that have happened? How will it be loaded in different ways? Could it be seismic? Could it be a uh, flood? Could it be some sort of other like um, weird mechanical or structural loading? Um, try to take an organized approach by going to each structure feature individually. So. You know, if it's just on a single embankment dam that's relatively simple, then it's a little bit more straightforward. But if you have something that has a dike and an embankment section and a structural non-overflow section and a spillway and tainer gates, then you're going to go and focus on each one of those individually, exhaust your failure modes all the way through it, and then you're going to stop and you're going to go to the next portion. And you're going to do that same thing again. Um, try to think about every loading condition that will occur. Flood, earthquake, structural loading, mechanical loading. Um, not just in general, but on each feature and for each failure mode. And then compare that final list of potential failure modes to past projects. Don't do it beforehand because we don't want to kind of predispose ourselves to a particular list or something like that. But it's sometimes good to go back and take a look at past projects and say, well, you know, we looked at this weirdo failure mode on this one project over here. Maybe we should think about on, on that for this project. Okay, so here's our simple example dam. It's an earthen dam. Um, we got a little bit of a, some sort of a drain here on the downstream side. This is downstream. This is upstream. Here's our uh, reservoir upstream. It has a uh, foundation layer, has, foundation has continuous sand layers through it. Um, it's got a settling uneven crest. It has a cut and cover outlet works backfilled by special compaction methods. It has an auxiliary dike um, that's not really shown here, but it probably has somewhat of a similar cross section. And it has a weathered rock spillway that is sort of out and away from the embankment. Okay, so I have had variable success in pulling this off. But so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask you guys to start just shouting out failure modes. And so when we I replicated the um, the key factors here on this slide, you know. Um, let's see here. Foundation has continuous sand layers, blah, 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 to kind of give you some clues about what these potential failure modes could be. So looking at all these facts, what are some pot potential failure modes that could um, affect this dam, this dike, the spillway, et cetera? Shout them out. Go ahead. What's that? Overtopping leads to failure, right? Because we're interested in what failure would be. So that's a good one. Saw a hand back here somewhere. Back All right. So um, backwards erosion piping, that is a form of internal erosion. So we're going to call it BEP -E here through the foundation, All right? Leads to failure. What else? 
embankment erosion, be a little bit more descriptive. So essentially, if, it, if this were a levee and water were flowing along it, uh, um, I think that's fair. And so um, I don't mean to keep on picking, it, picking on you, but this is great. I appreciate it. So tell us how that would lead to failure. Like in your mind, how does that lead to a release of uncontrolled release of water downstream? A crack that would eventually cause internal erosion and maybe blow out down on the downstream slope. Okay. Excellent. So we want to, that was really good because we kind of talked about a failure mode and then we described it all the way to failure, which is what we always want to do. We want to, we want to understand how, uh, all the things that will fail this thing. So let's see here. Um, uh, flood side scour leads to internal erosion. Blow out and breach. Maybe we don't need that blowout part, but anyways. What else? We've got some good stuff going here. Slope failure. Okay. Add one over here. Initiate so internal erosion or erosion of the spillway? Spillway erosion, okay. Leads to premature lowering of the crest or something like that. Okay. So um So I think we could keep this going for quite a long time. So um, I've seen failure mode lists go from anywhere to about 35 to dams or levees that have a lot of features to over 100. But let's call this good for right now for the sake of our example. So we've, we've brainstormed a list of failure modes here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go through that list and we're going to screen out and try to figure out which ones are going to be the risk drivers that will advance to the risk assessment phase and actually assess risk on. So um, there's a couple of strategies to do this. Um, typically, we'll go through each one and we'll kind of start to talk that out. How important is this? Is this likely to happen? Sometimes it's good to institute. I like to institute sort of a rating system, like a maybe A, B, and C, with A, definitely a risk driver, C, definitely not a risk driver, and B, well, I'm not sure yet. You know, So we go through and re-rate A's and B's, obviously, and then we go back to the top of the list and start to look at the B's in the context of the rest of our failure modes. So let's give that a try. So overtopping leads to failure. So we said, um, so we said um, that the it has a settling uneven crest. So you know the crest isn't uniform all the way across. So that means maybe there's some low spots. So what do you guys think? Is, is overtopping, should that be a risk driver for us? Who said overtop? I think you did, right? What do you think about that? Is it, should, should that be a risk driver for us, do you think? You think so? What, what, what makes you say that? Uh, so I, I tend to agree with you. So there's information we're missing, like if we had a PMF study that said, um, this thing has five feet of freeboard during a PMF, maybe that wouldn't be such an issue. Um, but if it said we it overtopped by 10 feet, then it'd be a pretty big issue. It's good to fall back on things that, you know, according to some like uh, Robin Fell data from like uh, from dam performance prior to 1994, almost 50% of dams failed due to overtopping. So that seems like a pretty good slam dunk for a risk driving failure mode. So we're going to call this an A. Oh. Okay. Um, number two, BEP through the foundation leads to failure. Um, what do you guys think about that? Um, let's see. So we, we don't have a ton of information here. We know that we have foundation has continuous sand layers. Um, what if I were to say that there's no real um, history of, um, actually, let's go the different way. Let's, let's, let's say that there, there's been uh, some history of some sand boils around here, and the borings have indicated that there's some low CU sands or low, they're, they're um, they're very consistent. They're very, uh, what am I trying to say here? Clean sands of, uh, kind of similar size in nature. So they may be, they may be pipeable. What do you guys think? Hey, think it a, any, any strong reasons? Probably, probably some of the reasons I just stated. Okay. So let's call that guy a, what about PFM three here? Flood side scour leads to, uh, internal erosion. I don't know how that got so wrong. Internal erosion, blowout, and breach. So let's assume this is a dam and not a levee. What do you guys think about that? Is this 
So we, if it, since it's a dam, there's not actually going to be water flowing by the structure, but there could be wave action sort of pounding on that structure from storms and stuff like that. So maybe it's not so much flood side scour due to flow, but maybe flood side scour leads to wave attack. What? Sorry? Uh, there's probably some layer of some sort of erosion protection, at least on the flood side, maybe not on the downstream side. We got a C over here. Anybody else? I think I saw a convert, uh, a low key C over here. Um, uh, any other, any other thoughts about, you know, this could be, so something else to consider is, okay, scour could happen, but we have another event that needs to happen as well. So it has to scour enough out to actually start to cause internal erosion all the way through the embankment and then sort of over, uh, overcharge the downstream slope and uh, blow that out. So there's a, a series of things that needs to happen in order for this to, to occur. That's a good reason to say, you know, the likelihood of this is probably going to be pretty low, at least when we compare it to something like BEP through the foundation. So in this practice that we're going through, comparing it to other failure modes that we've already said is going to be a risk driver can be really useful. So if you compare that to BEP, which one's going to be more likely, PFM2 or PFM3? I think I'm saying some twos. Agreed. So maybe this is a good candidate for a C. Um, let's, do, let's do one more. Um, how about spillway erosion? What do you guys think about spillway erosion? Yeah. So how often is it used? What kind of... So we do see that it's, it's weathered rock spillway, but we don't know, know stuff about like, is there a concrete sill? You know, um, so it's, it's tough to tell. So let's call that one a B. Um, let's, let's, well, let's go through some of the others and see if we can't maybe even send like an intern out to go take a couple of pictures or dig through the files a little bit or something like that. Slope, slope failure. Um, so let, let's say this, this dam's like 50 years old. Um, Original designs uh, indicate it's got a, a positive factors of safety. We don't really have any signs of distress. What do you guys think about that? See? What? Could be a sign of distress. Yeah, that's, that's not, that, that, that actually could be true. Um, but all dams settle a little bit. The fact that it's variably setting, set, settling is a little on the weird side. Um, but we've got pretty good performance of that, and uh, this dam's been in place for a long time. Um, you do have a good point with that kind of like variable uh, crest settling, but without additional information, you know, maybe that is a B. Maybe we need to think about that. But, you know, we can't put these Bs off. We got to come back and we got to classify them during this exercise one way or the other. So if we think it's going to be an issue, then we need to explore it. It would become an, an A. So. That's something that maybe we need to flesh out in our drawings, talk over a little bit more amongst ourselves to really make a decision about, do we think that this crest settling is something that leads us, that is attached to instability, or is it about other issues? You know, is, is some of our uh, embankment material sort of like uh, migrating into the foundation, which may, could cause this periodic settling of the crest or something like that? So we want to talk these discussions out sufficiently enough to say, we're going to look at this failure mode in the, in the risk assessment, or we're not. And we need to document why we're not. So let's call this part done. We've got at least two risk drivers, uh, overtopping and BEP to the foundation. We'd have two that we maybe we want to talk about a little bit further, um, but we just are a little bit pressed for time here. And uh, so I also wanted to come back and talk about our next one, which is doing this from the FERC perspective. Let's say we ran through a, the, the brainstorming part and we've come up with a bunch of failure modes but we're going to look at two of failure modes that we've brainstormed first one's going to be overtopping and breach of the main embankment um, and pfmb conduit stuck closed we're going to run this through FERC's uh, process of screening failure modes so let's start with overtopping and breach of the main embankment so we start up here is the, uh, the potential failure mode physically possible yeah, we know that overtopping has failed a lot of dams before, so it's, it's definitely something that can happen. Um, so we go down here, does PFM meet parts one and three of failure definition? Part one, uncontrolled release of the reservoir, reservoir in part or in whole. Yes, especially if we overtop at the main embankment section, we're going to lose our entire reservoir. Uh, it's going to be bad news. 
Three, results in an adverse consequence. Well, yes, we're gonna get a lot of inundation downstream, uh, probably loss of property, could be loss of life. Um, so yes, yes on both of those. Is PFM so remote to be considered clearly negligible? What do you guys think about that? No, why, why do you say that? So I would tend to agree, or at least, I don't know, so these verbal descriptors are weird, you know, but I would say it's, we'd have some sort of hydrologic study would tell us how likely it is to occur. Ideally, we'd have something to say, would this thing likely overtop or would it not? Um, a lot of times we would extrapolate that out, even if we had a PMF study that said, we really think it's gonna be only, we got about six inches of freeboard. Well, I'd still probably call that a risk driver, you know? So um, I think, it's something that's not so remote that we can rule it out unless it's a one in 10 million type situation or something like that. And even then arguable. So let's call this not clearly negligible. Uh, is failure imminent or in progress? I hope not uh, or else we'd be in some serious trouble. Uh, so this is a credible failure mode. So let's look at PFMB, conduit stuck closed. Um, is the PFM physically possible? Well, it kind of depends on your, on your gate design, but let's just say this is like a, uh, uh, just like a concrete gate, a slide gate or something like that, that is subject to racking and probably has done so in, in, the, in the past. And so, uh, so yes, it's physically possible. Does PFM meet parts one and three of failure definition? Part one, uncontrolled release of the reservoir in whole or in part. Well, if it's stuck in the closed position, we're not really releasing any water. Um, part three results in an adverse consequence. Well, we can't operate our gate and so we can't regulate our, our reservoir level as the way that we would want to. So I would call that an adverse consequence. So, um, but it's not meeting both. So over here to know, does it meet parts two and three in the failure definition? So part two, inability of the project uh, features or components to perform their intended function. Yes, project features or components performed in an impaired or com compromised fashion. Uh, well, we've, we've met one of these already. Misoperation is the other one. And two, adverse consequence, yes. So yes on this. Is PFM so remote to be considered clearly negligible? Well, we said earlier that it's got a little bit of a history of some weirdo pro, uh, operation. So um, no, it's not clearly negligible. Would damages be limited only to the licensee? Sounds like it, unless there could be some upstream uh, houses or structures that could potentially be flooded by the, the reservoir rising, but let's say that's unlikely. So uh, yes, it would be limited only to the licensee. Would financial damages exceed licensee threshold? Um, that kind of depends on the licensee. So that's something you'd want to check with your independent uh, owner. Yeah. That could cause overtopping. Could lead to overtopping, yeah. So. So that's a great question. So this would be, we would view this as, I would try to attack that as a separate failure mode. So closed co stuck conduit leads to a uh, rise in reservoir or premature spillway of flow. But then if we made PFMC, conduit stuck closed leads to overtopping, then we'd run that through the same process and probably the result would be different, right? Good question. Okay.